Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to Humanita TV. Uh, today, we are going to discuss about the education USA. Actually, we're going to, to talk about the five steps for uh, an international student to join uh, US uh, universities. Uh, uh, online, together, we are with the Gitega International Academy students. Um, we are also with the Gitega International Academy alumni, and we are very, very lucky to, to have uh, the regional education uh, advisor coordinator along with us. Uh, maybe some questions that I will not be able, uh, I'll be um, honored to, to have uh, to have her help us and join us uh, with the discussion. And uh, as, as part of the culture, uh, feel free to discuss in any language. If you feel like we will try to, to answer as per your questions, but bear with us that we'll be using mainly English and somehow with Kirundi and French as uh, time allow. Will not exceed maximum 45 minutes for this program. Understood. Actually, uh, there are five steps to join an uh, international uh, um, studies in the US. The first step is uh, research options. Then uh, you complete the applications. You will need to finance your study. That means if you don't have your own money, you have to look for. Um, uh, financial support uh, elsewhere, either in the school or outside the school. Then after that, you have to apply for visa, which is one of the complicated, uh, uh, complicated um, steps for Burundian students, maybe generally for Africa. After the application, uh, successful application, we will have um, a pretty much orientation. The one can ask himself, why do we talk about pretty much orientation? It's because the US has a different culture and then in Burundi or Africa generally, there's also another set of culture. We try to uh, um, give kind of guidelines, the do's and don'ts that uh, one should not do and what uh, what the other one should, uh, how should, you should understand to accommodate the culture. This is uh, to enable you to feel comfortable uh, when you are at school, especially when you are you be far from your parents. The first steps, uh, which is uh, uh, search for your options, you really have to uh, to ask yourself, what are your powers? What are your capabilities? What do you want to study? And then from there, you start uh, taking over, searching the, for the option that you want, what the, the, the program you want to study, that you're really comfortable. Not any program will, be, will fit, because most of our students here in Burundi, they think just to go to the US, and then you just join university. You really have to do, to do the course you are comfortable, the course that you are able uh, to do. After that, you have to understand that in the US, they are actually the university, it's four years. Contrary to Burundi, they actually, the university studies, is only uh, three years. With the US, it's four years. Then this is uh, the bigger universities whereby you will have to, to complete the four years to get the degree. Then there is uh, uh, community colleges whereby you study for two years, then you receive uh, what is called associate degree. So if you, you still want to continue with the four years degree, you will need to uh, complete the four years. Sometimes the community colleges, they have transfer options whereby you go to you, you can look for university, maybe the school can connect to university that you complete for, for the next two years. The advantage of um, community colleges, they are relatively uh, cheap compared to four years uh, uh, studies. The other one is when you are doing the, the search option, uh, mainly uh, you don't have to to concentrate on only one university. Sometimes you can really place your faith on one university and you spend all much time and then at the end of it, you find you are not uh, successful. Then uh, I would uh, usually, uh, uh, in the process, the process of searching, I advise students to um, uh, 
multiply the such options like universities. Then after you've got a lot of now a lot of universities that you feel they fit um, your option, you will start narrowing the choices. Then you narrow up to minimum or maximum of five universities you think uh, you can uh, you can apply. Then you, uh, I'm sure if you apply to at least three universities, there, uh, there are a lot of chances that uh, you can have one or two enough. Then to, it will be upon you to uh, to decide which one you want to uh, to to join. Then during the search, the searching option, I really encourage students to really check what are other what, what does the school offer apart from the the program that you want to do. What does the school offer? Does it uh, have other like um, extracurricular activities or academic activities or sport or any other talents? So these are the other thing you really have to look into it, into it. And then you really have to check, obviously, the, the financial uh, support um, component. If the school has that and you really need financial support, you 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 find you you'll be in a better position. If you think you don't have enough money and the university does not have financial support um, uh, package, it will be very very difficult for you to uh, to join that university. And the other uh, point is that, that uh, you will have to get ready for standardized tests. I know it's expensive, but you really have to get ready. There's most university uh, they, that they provide scholarship. They usually uh, require uh, TOEFL or SAT, uh, and you really have to have good marks to be much more competitive because the scholarship you're applying for, it's the same scholarship all countries in Africa are applying for, all countries in Europe and the whole world is applying for. So it's kind of a competition and and how good you have to be. When you are uh, evaluating yourself, you will have to check, and as I talked about the power, well, what are your leadership qualities? How are you involved in the community? How are you supporting uh, other youth or the community in general? All these uh, is, it are contributing factors if you really want to be much more competitive. Then on uh, uh, the step number two, which is uh, uh, completing uh, the applications, you have to know the, the application requirements. As I said, uh, the standardized test, there are some universities that they want you to provide upfront the, the evidence you are, you are really good in the English language, or you are good in, in math. So all that is uh, the thing you have to put into, uh, into consideration. Then uh, when you are, in the application process, I would really uh, advise you to check the deadlines because uh, international universities, they are very, very strict with the deadlines. Actually, even in Africa, they are very, very strict with the deadlines. Check when they, you are supposed to submit, the last day to submit, to submit, but don't wait to run with the deadlines. Try to be ahead. The other uh, thing I would advise students is to uh, watch, check their emails most of the most of the time or on a regular basis. Because I've had a lot of experience with the students who come to me and they show me what they have been asked by the school, and yet it is uh, six weeks uh, after they have re asked uh, for the the specific requirements. This causes a lot of challenges to me and the challenges to students and, and, and parents. Uh, then uh, the other thing, the same university that requires admission test, all that you really have to get acquainted with it, to get ready for that. Uh, the option number four or the step number three, which is financing your studies. As I said, the resources uh, you have, you may be having two or three four sources. One is yourself or parents. The other one is maybe an association. Uh, the other one maybe could be for any organizations, sometimes the country. So I really uh, want to uh, encourage students to minimize, to maximize the, the financial part. How are they going to get funds? Is the university they're applying for 
uh, and require maximum uh, like uh, full funding, you have to pay for your job. Then if you don't have enough money, that means you, you really have to um, maximize your staffing options, looking for university that will provide a lot of uh, opportunities. And, um, you really have to take um, advantage. But the other question I used to have, and I know sometimes I've, so, I've seen some of you uh, asking that question, are the credit cards. Uh, maybe uh, Faith uh, will uh, help uh, maybe to help, will help me to kind of answer uh, when it comes to how to handle the uh, universities that requires uh, one to pay some money through credit uh, credit cards. Uh, the step um, number four is visa application. With the visa application, I have hired many students. They say I have everything. I have something. I have a scholarship, but uh, I'm surprised that I did not get a visa. And yet you went there in the, in the box knowing that you're 100% sure you're going to get the visa. There's a lot of uh, requirements. There is a, you have to have the, the admission letter, the I-20, a finan a financial um, um, proof that you will be able to complete your study or to finance your study throughout your time in the US. And then you also have uh, to, to have the I-20 form, which is uh, really, really important, especially when it comes to the visa applications. The, the other point I usually ask students is when you are on that stage of uh, uh, visa applications, you have to know why you want, why you want, your, you want, you want to go to a specific university, why you want to do the course, like biology, like uh, let me say medical studies, uh, engineering, you have to justify very well why uh, you want to do that to do that course and why you want to do it in the US. Because sometimes you have here locally in Burundi, for the case, or in African countries, there are a lot of uh, universities that have uh, this kind of program. So you don't understand, if you can't uh, justify, explain why you really want to do it in the US, it may be very, very complicated for, um, for you to, to get the visa. Then the other thing you really have to understand uh, for those who uh, do apply for visa, there's, there are options of trying because I've had, I've met too far, so far three students here in Burundi coming to me. After three or four years, they have applied, they have applied for a visa with a full right scholarship. They said, they went there and they were denied the visa and they completely sit and forget the rest. So that's, I don't find that was the right uh, action that they did. So the thing that once you try and you have failed, you still have many, um, many more options for you to keep um, applying. Maybe if you have additional information, I'm saying this was, I've had a lot of experience along that. The last thing, um, which after which we have we'll let um, people intervene. I will, I will hear patient uh, speaking about maybe his experience in the US that went actually on the step number five, number five, which uh, we require students who are in the US or who went to study in the US to share their experience to the local students before they, they uh, depart. We, after the successful application, of a visa, we usually invite students and first of all, hear from them, what is their impression? How do they feel as they want to go in the US? How are they ready to start uh, studying in the US? Uh, what is the image they, do they have of Americans or the US in general? It's, that's the very time we, we invite um, the students we kind of wipe out the worry they have, the inconfidentiality, the inconfidence they have um, to, to tackle the studies after all the four steps, uh, uh, successful steps um, for applying with their, in the studies in the US. So we really invite um, the students to join us sometimes in America, in American embassy or American spaces, American corners, we discuss kind of a broad 
uh, kind of discussions sometimes. We invite alumni from the university, uh, from US University, they share their experiences, then they answer questions from um, the students who are getting ready to travel uh, to the US. Uh, maybe, um, Faith, uh, do you have um, anything you can share with us before we go to questions? Uh, thank you, Rama, for such a comprehensive presentation. And I would like to add to just what Rama has said, that it's important that you don't just apply to one university, apply to multiple universities, because the process takes roughly between 12 months to 18 months, and you do not want to apply to only one university, and then they tell you that you are not admitted, because there are three options or outcomes when you apply to a university. You are admitted, wait listed, or deferred, number three, you're rejected. So in the instance where a student is rejected, then it is always best that this student had also applied to other institutions, then they have a fallback plan. Then we also talk about something that is called good fit, where a student asks themselves, I know that this is a big university, it has an amazing name, but is it a good school for me? Will I enjoy being here for the next four years, for the next five years, if it's uh, a degree that's going to take you five years? So always ask yourself, is this a good university for me? The same with the university will ask, are you a good student for our school? Are you going to fit? Those are very important things uh, for us to think about. But Ramathan has said that research, you searching for those universities, is going to the most important thing that you will do. Why the universities are always going to give you all the application requirements, after which they will tell you what the deadlines are. And US deadlines are deadlines, so you cannot apply even two minutes after the deadline. So always make sure that you are applying before the deadline. Thank you, Rama. You're welcome, Faith. Uh, Passion, would you, do you have any, um, uh, uh, would you please share with us your experience in the US universities? Yes, of course, I uh, do have, you know, just not too much, but I do have uh, some things that I can share with uh, everybody who wants to know about this. So um, I started in the US and um, most of, especially I would agree with what um, Faith was talking about. There's a lot of, um, you know, people are strict on the deadlines, of course, um, but also it's not the same way we're used to here in Africa. There, you know, system of studies and, and you know, everything is, becomes a little bit different because, uh, you know, we're, we're used to, you know, uh, cramming and just having things uh, stuck in our heads and we just regurgitate it on the papers. But most of the universities in America, actually most, almost all of them, uh, want to test how much uh, capacity does the brain of a student have? You know, like how much do you retain versus how much do you have? So it doesn't matter how much you've studied, but how much do you retain um, in your brain? And, 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 and how is that gonna help your community or whatever you want to study? Uh, and how is that gonna impact other people, not just you? So um, being there, I've learned, it's, 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 you know, there's a lot of hard, hard work, especially to do, you know, with papers and, and you know, things like that. And, and, and a lot of times that's what they do. They, you know, research is, Sorry, uh, maybe uh, we'll get back to patient. So uh, if I try to emphasize what has been talking about, mainly in Africa with Burundi experience, uh, students uh, tends to really cram the work. Uh, I can see, uh, are you back? Can you please yes, I'm back. Uh, sorry about that. I think it's something to do with the network. Um, oh, sorry, continue. What were you saying? You were talking about. You were just talking about how they emphasize the, the capacity building than cramming by packing everything in the head. Maybe that's exactly what you were talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean. 
Yeah, definitely. First of all, when when I actually got there, it was you know it was a different um, kind of atmosphere because I had never uh, been in the, in the U.S. before. I'd been in some countries in Africa, but you know, I went straight from Burundi straight to America. So I like I had to get accustomed to different styles of whatever was there, different you know culture and and everything else. And I've also realized that you know the culture is as good as 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 the education system uh, of the place. So the education system that was there has really affected and it impacted the communities around. And that's, that's one of the things I thought I'd love to see around here in Burundi and how does our education system change our community rather than anything else impacting our, you know, um, our community. So uh, my experience in America it wasn't really that easy when I got there first, you know, um, so I was talking about, you know, since we're talking about, you know, studies and, and, and stuff, um, I had to, you know, even getting down to the minute things of how they do things, you know, their, you know, how they write their letters, you know, like the normal um, uh, simple letters, you know, so they, they, it becomes really different. So when I got there, um, the number one thing I did, I was okay, I really need to know how everything is is done here. And, you know, I had to be patient, of course, uh, as hard as it was, uh, you know, making friendships. So in, in like in my college, people were really friendly and, you know, they walked me through almost everything just slowly by slowly. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a good thing. And, 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 and I believe, you know, there's nothing to be scared of and definitely Burundians can make it to the uh, American system and, and, and the US and their universities, of course, because I know they're able, if I was able to do that, so anybody else can do that. So I definitely encourage whoever has, you know, this passion to learn and study because, and this is another thing I'm going to mention before I finish, there's a lot of competition over there. There's a lot of competition, which is, you know, what develops communities, if there's no competition, then everybody just gets comfortable with what they know, hence ignorance, you know? So with the competition that was there, it actually stretches, you know, people's brains out to actually work and work with what they have and get to where they want to get. So that's yeah. my intake for now um, on my experience in the US. Thank you, Ramadan. Thank you so much, uh, patient. Uh, I can, I've just seen Karin, uh, Karin is uh, uh, please you're welcome on, uh, on board and uh, please introduce yourself and we would like, we'd like to learn from you. Actually, uh, it has been a while, almost two or three years. So you're most welcome, Karin. Thank you, I'm so hey. glad to be here. I'm Karen and um, I'm studying in, in the United States right now. And um, I'm at Pensacola Christian College in Florida. And thank you for inviting me here. This is really interesting and um, glad to share with you guys uh, what you can learn from the experience here. Um, mostly everything like that patient shared will be the same thing, hard work. Um, I do know that Burundians know about hard work. They know about uh, studying so like a lot of notes and stuff. But the difference comes in here, they don't just wanna know what they gave you in your notes. They want your critical thinking. So yes. most of the stuff would be applications, which we, it's a little bit of an adjustment from Burundi because teachers just wanna know, oh, what did I give you? Do you still remember that? But here they just wanna see, oh, how much can you think of your own? How can you apply this? He also mentioned about writing papers. I used to think that only like grammar majors or English majors would be the, the ones writing all the time. But man, you can't count how many papers you'll be writing. And most of the things coming from your thinking, research, so that's one thing you should be learning, um, researching stuff, digging deeper, and um, getting to know different perspectives from people. And actually your judgment is the one that makes your paper great. Like, or oh, is this person right? So that comes from a lot of research. Hard work is like the key thing in education here. And I mean, another thing is in Burundi, asking for help is not cheating. But here, if it comes to your class, asking for help is cheating. 
So the only thing that I would encourage you guys to do is learn to value your own work, no matter how you feel like, oh, it's a little not good, whatever. Teachers appreciate it when it's from you, no matter how weak it can be, that's how they can build you up. So the education side, I think that's it because patient mostly shared everything, work hard. And I know you can do that, guys. We're really not better, but we're doing it. And we were always like you at GIA, same education, same background, but we're making it so you can also make it. Hard work, research, ask questions, don't be intimidated. And don't just follow everything that the teacher gives you. Just do your own work, like go around, search. Yeah, and then when it comes to culture, patients were sharing about how education is really affected by culture, that's true. Um, but I would say, don't be scared of the culture. It's really different, completely different, but you can adjust in it and you can also make a difference in it. Um, I would say that people here, don't give much attention to words. Uh, most of the time, they don't want to sit there and keep listening to you. But you will definitely make friends, um, and you will also you also be able to you know show your talents in different ways. Ramadan spoke about getting extracurricular activities. Don't just concentrate on studies. It's a big part. That's why we are here. But make sure you go around and uh, do different clubs, learn new things things that we don't do in Africa, like ice skating. You might break a bone or two, but <laughs> you know, just be outgoing. And one of the things to be careful for is don't just say, oh, I don't do that. You know, when they ask you, can we go fishing? Don't just say, no, I don't do that. You know, we don't do that. Just be like, oh, I would like to learn, even though you don't know, you know, <laughs> just show interest because I realize Burundian culture, we value you talking a lot, sitting with people, quality time. But here they value activities, what you do, how, how are you involved? And that's how they also value you. That's how they will be calling upon you. Yeah, and um, thinking back on the, I think he mentioned about how to get a school and stuff. Mostly here, they wanna know what you wanna do in the future. So you can talk about, oh, I wanna study this. But if you don't come up with a reason why you want to study that, they would think you're just joking and you would just drop out of school. So have your, um, your reason straight. It may change, it's true. You may start with this as your freshman year and change later. But as of right now, as you think, think of why are you choosing to study what you're choosing? And that would be a question that everybody would be asking you here. When you get here, they'll be like, oh, why do you want to study this? What do you want to do it in the future? So. You just don't want to be here and look like, oh, I'm not sure, you know. So, yeah, I think that's my input there. Yeah, thank you so much, Karen and uh, patient. Uh, I have a question for you two. Uh, actually, the relationship between students and professors or teachers here in Africa is generally uh, to be tense. No tense in such, students tend to fear uh professors they feel that like there's some question if they must not go to meet him they don't feel like if for, for a simple advice they can hardly meet the professor and ask questions how do you see uh, the relationship between students and professors in the u.s compared to your, your past experience back in burundi here Hmm. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. um, well, the, the relationship between um, students and teachers is way different um, over there than it is here in Burundi. Because, and I understand why it is like that. Uh, here in Burundi, your uh, professor or your teacher is, you know, like up here and you're somewhere in the ground you know like the levels aren't really the same you know but what i realized when i got there like teachers are your friends you know like they just wow. they don't just teach you in class but they actually are with you in life because what's what's the purpose of studying unless it's actually going to impact your life you know and why would a teacher not be a friend if they're actually teaching you things that will impact you in your life. So 
I've also realized that uh, it's really important for a teacher to be a friend to the students. Um, I am now teaching here at uh, um, GIA uh, and I'm giving some, you know, courses and now I'm realizing, wow, this is actually different, you know, from student to, to teacher and, you know, but also it's helping me because I would love to have this relationship with the students that I'm actually instructing or, or teaching because, you know, you only have them for what, six years, seven years, but at, or four years, but after that, they'll go. And what they rely on is what you actually gave them. Not really what you taught them, but what you gave them and what's gonna impact them, their families and their neighbors, you know? Um, and, you know, as Christians, we also know that being, you know, loving people is, is one of the principles that we're supposed to have, not just Christians, but, you know, as humans, we know that, you know, loving people is, um, it's a good thing in general than, you know, loving your students and having your students love you is, um, you know, is also part of what changes their life. Um, before I pass back the mic, you know, the floor to you, I, I would like to, 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 to respond to somebody who, you know, who, who directed a comment to me. And this is Nestor uh, Aninene something saying Yumba, and he says, Rukundo, what you said is true. Uh, yes, in Burundi we can, but what we miss is only the ability to be, to uh, being able to focus on what we need. Sometimes we try, but we miss supporters and we become discouraged. I'd like to tell um, St. Yumba that you are actually your number one supporter before anybody else, you know, and you will push yourself as far as you can, then people will pick you up from there, you know but you are actually the one who has to push yourself. You are your first supporter before anybody else steps in your life. So that's my yeah. intake, thank you. Well, uh, adding on that on the teacher side, the question, uh, I would say that, yeah, teachers would be your best friends here. Actually, not kidding, like best friends. Uh, literally teachers, uh, here because kids are like raised up having everything they want and they really don't open their mind to the outside world they don't know much about the outside world and the teachers who are educated and search about the world and want to know stuff they will be coming to you asking you questions they want to know you more they want to know how they can help you especially like for me teachers know i want to go back to my country so whenever they find something interesting, they come to me, they're like, hey, we think you would need this in the future. So they will be there for you anytime. They will be doing stuff that your friends at school cannot do. And it's not that your friends are not just loving as the teachers, but the teachers have grown up and they have seen this, like they have seen all these different natures and cultures coming in front of them. And they realize that later on, their investment is so deep and so influential to the students that they choose to be loving and caring. So I would say, don't be afraid of teachers. Approach them. Um, that's what I did when I first got there. Because of culture shock and stuff, I approached my teachers a lot. And they were so helpful, so kind. You have actually long-lasting relationships with your teachers, even when you're done with school. Yeah, so I would say yeah, befriend them and they're yes. actually important because they, they have this, <laughs> they have the brains and they have they have a lot of stuff that you can need in the future. You can call them later, even when you're done with school, they will still be there for help. Yeah. yeah. Uh, again, I, I hope I'm not terracing or taking the time for, for Lee uh, to ask questions. Uh, may I say what both uh, Patience and Karen, what was the most difficult moment when you joined the US? <laughs> Karen, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say um, adjusting to the culture and knowing that Simply because you can't live in your Burundian culture, it doesn't mean they hate you. Mm -hmm. So that was the first hard thing. Knowing oh. that the diversity gotcha. is not a problem. It's just it's just a new skill. It's just a new thing you learn. So that took me like a year 
to know, oh, I'm accepted here, not just the way yeah. I am. It's just that I need to learn how they live here. So living in my room and um, living at school, it's a Christian school. And literally, you, you expect everybody to come around and sing Kumbaya together, you know. But that's not a thing. <laughs> that's not what happened. Uh, you will find people who don't like talking. You will find people who um, have nothing in common with you, like when I mean, like your hobbies. They don't, they don't do anything you do. And um, because the personalities and the way we are raised in Africa and Burundi, it's like everybody becomes your friend immediately. It's a little different yep. here. So that would be the only thing that really shocked me. I thought I would struggle in school a little bit to adjust, but that wasn't a thing at all. My school side has really been great, but my social life, that has been my um, downfall a little bit. But I would say it's really easy to overcome that. Yeah, your attitude matters. You have to know that the people don't hate you simply because they want to talk to you. Sometimes they are just not to talk to people. Um, yeah, one example I would give just a little bit. I had a roommate who was sick for a week and I didn't know until the mother came. And the mother traveled eight hours and I just found out that she was sick when the mother was there. So I was like, wow, this would never happen in Burundi. This is so strange. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> if you were to take that person, I would think, oh, my roommate hates me, you know. But it's just they used to talk to their parents when something is wrong. While in Burundi, we used to talk to our friends when something is wrong. Yeah, so it would be there. They would be a little bit hard to overcome, but they are, you know, it's a new thing. You learn. Thank you so much. Uh, Lee, do you have any questions? Uh, I can see you didn't say any word. Please uh, feel free to ask if you, if you have any question or your concern. Yeah, actually, thanks for passing on the mic. I've been waiting for this opportunity for a while. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so, yeah, um, I have a question, not exactly related to the education part of this whole program thing, but I believe it's a monumental question to any and every student aspiring to, you know, travel for studies to the United States or any other country for that matter. And this question is in relation to that extra bit of time that you need besides the studies, you know, everything that's in the program, you know, that part that's not part of the program. Like, is it present in abundance or do you have to actually make that for yourself? as in have to forego some programs or others in order to make time for your own endeavors? Huh. Good question. Um, now I would say that you have to forego some stuff. Yeah, you will not be able to participate in everything. And mm -hmm. one of the things you have to learn in college or university here is to prioritize your stuff you will find yourself busy all the time, all the time. And people who are workaholic, we find themselves going. And at the end of the day, you're just dead. And um, I would advise you guys to be able to learn to prioritize your stuff. What do I need first? What do I want to engage in? And be intentional about what you choose. Yeah, you will not just be able to play all the sports that are available there and going all the musical things that are available. Yes, there will be there in varieties, but you choose what you love most and why do you want to do this? You know, yeah, I would say you will not be able to do everything. <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks. Um, patience? Um, to be honest with you, there's, um, there's one thing that helped me Actually, people always ask me this question, why did you come back in the country? <laughs> and, 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 and I also has, uh, you know, I've been asking this question to myself for a long time, but this is one thing that helped me. When I left the country, I had a purpose and a destination, you know? Um, and I, when I got there, I didn't want to change that because, you know, 
if you leave without knowing what you're going for and why, then you'll get there and get lost in a lot of things and you get messed up. You know, I'm not gonna lie, it was a temptation for me to just stay there. But the number one thing that always kept, you know, kept coming back was you had a goal and now your goal is completed, now go back, you know. So um, it didn't just help me in that area, but also um, to do with this, you know, the studies and, and outside environment too. Um, man, there was a lot of things. I wanna say that not just Burundians, I'm now I'm addressing myself to, 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 to Africans. We are so able, I cannot believe, you know, like when I got there, got so many opportunities, you know, going tours and, and you know, cause I did music too and things that I never thought I would be able to do, you know, mm -hmm. but then I realized, you know, I learned this here in Africa, you know, so why won't I bring it back, you know? so. But I got so many opportunities, so we are able really to do a lot of things. So when you get there and you don't have a specific purpose and goal, mm -hmm. people will just want to take you know advantage of what you do and who you are, and they will just you know you will stay there and you you'll be no good to your community, you'll be no good to to your country, you will not you'll be no good to the you know to this continent. So what I can say is really knowing your purpose, your goal. And of course you have to, you know your destination. So that's all I have really. All right, thank you. Next yeah. question. Um, this one's, uh, I believe it was Karen who mentioned this um, while she was talking. Um, it had to do with switching forces once you're already there and you know established and whatnot. You know, because you might discover a better path, could I say? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I'd like to know how that works and what you lose and gain if you're in possession of such information. Okay. Uh, so, normally here, when you're doing your freshman year, you're really doing general courses, you're doing classes that everybody must take. So you have a semester where you have to be like doing general classes like math, English, whatever. It's not like high school level, but mostly a little bit harder than high school, but it will be general. So that semester you will not be losing anything. Whatever major you choose, you can do that when you're doing pre-medicine, you can do that when you're doing Bible, you can do that when you're doing chemistry. So whatever major you, you, you choose, you'll be able to do those classes your freshman year and without losing anything. So after your freshman year, you've been at the school, you've been talking to people, you've been developing like new desires of what you wanna follow, or probably you've been sticking to the one you had in the beginning. So that semester, you talk to your advisor and then they will ask you, do you still wanna keep the major you had at first or do you wanna change? So that's when you register for a new major. You will not lose anything. There will be no time wasted at all. So you can switch your freshman year it's two semesters, you can switch within that one. We do not, like, I personally would not advise somebody to switch when they in their sophomore year, that means their second year, or their junior year, which is the third year, because that means you might stay at school for longer. So try to you know, navigate your way around, see if you like what you wanna pursue when you're still in your freshman year, because you're still doing the general classes, then you can switch your major around in your first year yeah all right thank you can i say something uh ramadan mentioned that education here is four years unlike Burundi, we do three years but i want to encourage you guys if you like if you happen to have to want to finish early it's possible i uh i started 2018 uh in the fall of 2018 but i'm graduating next year in may so it's just gonna be three years instead of four. It's possible to do that taking extra classes. So the minimum here is 12 credits or the maximum is 17. I know I take 18 and I do classes in the summer. It's easy, it's not hard. You just put in a little effort and you can finish early if you need to. Yeah. All right. Thank yeah, you. thank you. Uh, thank you, Karen, and 
uh, Karen. Uh, Josh, do you have any questions? Uh, sorry, we've been um, having you back there. So feel free to ask any questions. Any question. yeah. yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I actually had a question for you too, um, Ramadani and Faith. I guess those are the most, um, like, uh, you could answer me better. Um, so yeah, this year being the Corona year, um, is there like any impact on admission in university for uh, any class of 2020? Faith, uh, Faith, would you please uh, answer to Josh? <laughs> Thank you very much for your question. Uh, what I will say is that the coronavirus is um, definitely changing a couple of things. And what I will say is that in, in other years, students were expected to take the SAT test or the ACT test. And we are seeing universities beginning to go test optional. So they are not asking students to submit the test. So this it's a lovely year to apply to US universities. And like everybody else who had to take their SAT test, try to crack their math skills on it. I don't know if Karen, that was your experience. Yeah. Did you take the SAT? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this year they might just uh, enjoy applying to school uh, without the, the SAT, the ACT. And what we are looking at is, you know, continuing to visit the university's websites. So for instance, which university are you interested in? Um, I was planning on Rice University. Okay, Rice, great. So go to Rice University website and see what they, they are asking you to, to submit to them. But most universities are going test optional. It doesn't mean that all universities are going to go test optional. Remember that in the US, they do not have a ministry of education. So what is true for one university is definitely not true for the other. So uh, I would mm -hmm. like to, uh, get in touch with Rice University and ask them to send me their COVID-19 response. I'll share that with Ramadani and he will share that with you. Thank you but very much. But professional is one of the things that uh, definitely this year is not, is it, going to see that is a bit different. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Josh, for your question. Uh, I feel, I feel, uh, I should feel really uh, responsible also to to just share a little bit seconds about uh, coronavirus. It's really uh, real. Uh, in Burundi, we are lucky. We have a few cases. We have not seen uh, many cases, and we have, we have not been closed into our houses. But it's not a WhatsApp information. It's not a real Facebook information. It's really, really real. So you, with your friends, the neighborhood, try to tell them that it's in real. They should not feel embarrassed to tell, to be told to wash their hands many times. You go in five shops, you wash your hands uh, five times. So you, when coping, actually while the hand is there, even within your family. Let us really uh, share among ourselves that really COVID-19, it's real. Uh, though it has really affected Burundi as uh, compared to South Africa, or Egypt for that case, even in Kenya, uh, are afraid to miss that. So uh, thank you for that uh, concern. Let us not only talk about education, we say, but also share about um, the the situation the world is passing through, which is affected, by the way, just given us a, a challenge for us to share uh, this kind of discussions. I wouldn't imagine at one time to have uh, a panel of six people discussing people from different countries, discussing issues at the same time and being followed with the Humoriza TV, uh, with the many, many people around. I've seen a lot of questions be asked. Uh, is there anybody who has any question for the next three minutes? I think we had said we're going to finish at uh, uh, quarter past uh, 6 uh, uh, p.m. Is there anybody who has any contribution or concern or anything? Okay, uh, I mean, I would just add a little bit uh, since we're being followed by a lot of people, you know, around here, Africa and everywhere else. Um, I, to me, it's just like an encouragement um, for people to actually take up this opportunity to 
uh, looking for opportunities outside because they're there. They're just waiting for somebody to chase them out, you know. Yes. And, yes. and really be able to, you know, work hard and you know get. We, we need to get out off of this African mentality that we're not able mm -hmm. to do something, you know, and or that we're just good for this community or just, you know, always, you know, as you had asked Karen this question, you know, what was the hardest thing? For me, the hardest thing when I got there was to actually believe that I'm able to compete with the people there, you know, because I always just saw myself as this little boy who grew up in Africa, somewhere in Burundi, in a little town, you know, and that's it. But now I'm in the world, in, in the, like the biggest, economy and, and everything you know the biggest country in the world and now i'm like okay now what do i do with that okay so my encouragement to everybody is actually to be able to believe in themselves and go out and chase these um, opportunities because they are there whether you're in kenya whether you're in south africa everywhere wherever you are now with that please come back and change your countries because they really do need you you know i said when we started that the country is as good as the education system you know, uh, so yeah. go learn and really bring it back to change your you know, education system and, 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 and you know, and your community. So, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you, uh, uh, patient. Maybe Faith, were, were you going to say something? Yes, just allow me to remind us that in as much as uh, things are changing and they are fast changing around the world because of coronavirus, that the U.S. universities are still welcoming international students. They still want you to be there. They're still looking uh, forward to having you join their classes. So uh, please go ahead and apply. And the U.S. definitely remains as the top uh, host for international students globally. And this is definitely a reflection of their quality, diversity, and innovation of the American higher education. Then think about the amount of money that US universities spend on research. A university like Johns Hopkins is known to spend hundreds of US dollars, hundreds of millions of US dollars just in research. And that means that as an undergraduate student, you don't have to wait for your master's degree and you don't have to wait for your PhD or your doctoral degree for you to engage in research. And I think that's an amazing opportunity for you. Then, uh, the other opportunity that I think it's uh, Karen who talked about it, that you do not have to decide. I mean, you're too young for you to know what will be best for you in the next 10 years. And you can go to a US university and try out as many degree programs that you are interested in. You can move all the way from biology all the way to zoology until you figure out what works for you. So you have two years for you to audit classes and begin to ask yourself, what am I looking for? And I think it is, um, patients who say, what are you looking for and why are you looking for it academically? And once you have that opportunity for you to know what you're looking for and why you're looking for it, then the U.S. Uh, becomes such an, an amazing destination of study for you. Uh, think about universities like MIT, which are going to allow you to design your own U.S. degree. You go to the university and you say, I know that the U.S. offers over 600 fields of study, but I don't like anything that you offer because Burundi, Kenya has a very different uh, need. And if you need to study what you're offering, if I went home, it will not fix what it is that I want to fix. And so they ask you, so then what do you want to study? And they will allow you, the US will allow you to design your own degree program. And I think that's, that is an amazing opportunity for any student. Then diversity means that you will be in class with a student from a different continent. Think about your roommates being from Brazil. The person that you have a conversation at breakfast at a cafeteria comes from Botswana. You go for lunch and the person sitting next to you is a Frenchman. You are meeting all these amazing people from across the world and they get to help you understand how other cultures work and how other economies work. So I think this is an amazing university. Uh, this is an opportunity, an amazing opportunity for you to think about a U.S. university. Also considering the fact that they are going to issue and offer you a financial aid package. The U.S. is one of the most generous countries worldwide that gives or awards international students uh, financial aid. Karen, I don't know if you enjoyed any financial aid package 
Did you apply for financial aid? Sorry, you're muted. You're muted. I'm sorry. So I did apply. I didn't get any because my school just grants them to nationals. But yeah, they're there. They are really there and they give them to national international students at different schools. Yeah. That's right. Uh, patients, did, 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 did the school you go to offer any international uh, students financial aid? Yeah, it actually gives more internationals, you know, the um, financial aid, but it's really not governmental. It's just like the school itself. It's not like government stuff. Government, you know, scholarships are mostly for the nationals, but the school in itself, does give, I mean, the first year when I got there, I got 7,000, you know, like uh, dollars on my, you know, tuition. So it does, they do give uh, financial aid. Okay. So uh, when you see the sticker price of a school like, um, let me think about it, a university like uh, Tufts University, $72,000, do not be intimidated by the $72,000 because Tufts University has the capacity to award you full financial aid if you qualify for it. Northwestern University in yeah. Chicago, around another $72,000, dollars per year. And these are packages that are given and awarded to international students. But you have to submit a very compelling application. And you have somebody like Karen who can go through your S's and tell you, I think this will cut it. I think we need to change this. So again, begin to use your networks. Now that you've met Karen, just don't say, oh, yeah, that beautiful lady that we made a presentation with. Remember that she's a resource for you. Patience is also a resource for you. So begin to reach out to Burundians who understand how you write and understand the cultural context within which you are in. And they can help you relay that in a piece yeah, of writing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Ramadan. Yeah, uh, we are trying to get in touch with Gilles, but it's very difficult to uh, reach him. Is there anybody who has a question uh, for the next one or two, one or two minutes before we close? Can I add something? Yes, please. Oh, yes, you had please. a question, Modest. Oh, no, no, no. I, I was just saying that I was okay. Okay. Yeah, there's a, there's a possibility here of doing a, a major and a minor. I think they don't tell people when they come here and they find out later. I would like you guys to know that you can do two courses at the same time at the same price. So that means you can major in uh, accounting and minor in finance at the same time. Or you can major in um, marketing and minor in graphic design. So that gives you a lot of possibility to get jobs anywhere because you have these two perspectives and you have the same amount of degree. Um, like they will teach you the same thing they teach a major in marketing, even if you're just minoring in it. So that's a possibility. You guys can consider that. Yeah. And I think just to plug into that conversation, Karen, I would like to say that so much has changed in our world. A lot had changed pre-COVID and so much is changing in this season of coronavirus. And I think yeah. that a student who is considering a double major is doing themselves a huge favor because it's going to be the same number of years that you're going to be in, in, in school. Mm -hmm. It's going to be for the same cost. Yeah. And you, know, you, you have this amazing opportunity for you to say, I'm an engineer who likes good food. So I'm gonna go study culinary arts and engineering. I mean, there's nothing sure. wrong with some good food for us sure. for an engineer, right? Or you are somebody who enjoys statistics, but you love to dance. And so you can study dance and music at the same time. Or maybe yeah. you are a super, yeah. super serious student. I had one, one of the Kenyan students who is at Princeton who is studying astronom astronomical engineering, aeronautical engineering. How that works, I don't know, but that was his choice. So you, you can bring all these combinations. You can bring computer science and computer engineering together. You can decide I'm going to be a mechanical engineer and I am going to study economics. You, you can look at all these things that you're interested in and you don't have to go to university twice for you to study that. 
So mm -hmm. thank you for raising that. that. That is awesome. And also think about um, the U.S. being a place where you study in the U.S. and then they allow you to go for a study abroad. And that is awesome. Think about being in the U.S. and then you are in school and you're thinking, I always wondered what it would feel like to go and study in Brazil. You like soccer. Or maybe in, 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 in the UK. And so you can study in the US and go and study in the UK. And I think that's that's a brilliant opportunity for you. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Hello, everyone. Hi, Gilles. Hello. Uh, hello. Hello. hello, this is Gilles. Can you hear me? Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Loud and clear. Loud and clear. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you do. Yeah, we can. Do you hear me all? Yes. Yes. All right, all right. Uh, uh, thank you very much for all of you guys. Uh, I believe you are all well. Thank you, Fe. Thank you, uh, Mulan. Uh, thank you, Miss Karen. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lee Beato. Thank you, Yosia Modest. It was very good actually here as in Burundi. We are all proud to hear from you guys, and we are very happy for you guys to go and uh, guess what is happening in the United States of America. Uh, we are very happy for you guys. Thanks. Yeah, hello. Thank you so much just for introduction. Uh, Faith, Jill is uh, one of the staff for Gitega International Academy, and then uh, for viewer of um, Ahumuriza TV, we've been uh, blessed by uh, uh, Yari alumni, uh, Perry Sachs, he's known as Gasap, who has really helped us to connect with alumni and uh, students and staff in different countries. I honestly appreciate for Faith, who just jumped in without any program. He, he just accepted to be with me. Otherwise, I was going to sweat around this program. Uh, thank you so much for everyone who followed us uh, uh, along uh, Humuriza TV. Uh, just to inform you that uh, as long as this situation prevails, we'll be having this uh, regular program, this pro program on regular basis, so that we, we provide you with tools. I mean, students uh, who want to go in the US, we feel free to ask questions. Uh, we we'll try to. Uh, put in few uh, next time links so that you can be for uh, make appointments if you do want to speak on one on one. I've seen some people who put their numbers that they want to speak uh, in box. I will find time for them uh, whenever uh, necessary. Uh, I wouldn't stop this in, uh, this program before taking Karen, who just came in from uh, far with the. I know she's very busy. Lee uh, with the uh, study preparation, Jules and uh, Faith very busy and uh, patient. I hope you will you will accept the next invitation whenever I call. Uh, I'm sorry again, I didn't mention uh, Joseph for uh, for also joining the team. And uh, uh, next time, uh, feel free to ask any question. For those who got my email. Write direct question to our, my email. I'll be uh, very grateful to give you a feed, feedback as soon as I can. And if I can't, and I know uh, Faith will be there uh, to help uh, to help me. Thank you so much, and have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're welcome.